Okay guys, well today we're making a little video of how the Dyna plug works. Now, um, I'm uh, under my Frontier 2012 and it's got a, uh, well it's at least a 16 penny size uh, nail probably jammed in the shoulder. It's not in a sidewall but it is in the shoulder and it's on the inside. This is the right rear drive wheel and uh, this is at an a skewed angle coming out so what I did was I put the uh, truck on this bottle jack to get the weight off this tire and I have decreased the tire pressure to about 10 pounds PSI I'm going to let it down just a little bit because I don't want this moving around while I'm trying to jam the dyna plug in there. Now my guess is that jamming the dyna plug in here is going to be hard, so it'll be really surprising if it's easy. Uh, I've got kind of a shoulder industry, injury, so I can't really push all that hard. So uh, we'll see how I do here. I am going to lower the jack just a little bit here because I don't want that tire moving up a little bit like it is. These are really good jacks. You can get them from Northern Tool. They're expensive. This is a two-stage bottle jack and uh, it works quite well. Let me make sure that so that's that's a little bit more on the ground now. I want a little bit. I want a little bit more pressure on that, so it's not moving when I'm trying to jam my dyna plug in there. I'm going to get a uh, tripod for this, and then I'll continue with this video here. Okay. So I'll just stop here. Okay. So here's your dyna plug, as you get it from Amazon. This is the Ultralight Extreme. You have all these different models. Now this one comes with your little instruction thing here you get a uh, you get four plugs and there's the loader here that comes with it this this actually already has a plug in it so that's what I'll be using today and also you have a little uh, pipe cleaner and this is important because you have to clean out this tube on this loader shaft really good when you use this to uh, help you uh, you know extract easily so this particular uh, Dyna plug is uh, machined aluminum. It has a uh, pommel head on it. Now my idea is to whack this thing with a rubber hammer so that I don't have to push really hard with my injured wrist. Mm -hmm. um, Dyna plug has all these different models. Uh, some have the rounded end, which means you can only kind of grab it on the sides. This you can kind of put in the palm of your grip here and push a little harder. So I'm curious to see how hard it's going to be. Now this has a uh, plastic knurled end on it which I'm not really all that keen about the more upper grade models you know give you a uh, machined aluminum I think this is a 6061 aluminum which is a good aircraft quality stuff to uh, to go on but essentially what you do here is you just take the uh, the shaft that's ready to go with the dyna plug in it already. You can see it's, it's sitting in there. You may want to make sure that dyna plug uh, is free to move because you've got, <laughs> you've got to pull it out. Now that's going to stay in the tire, that little... Well, it's, it's smaller, smaller than a 22 caliber bullet and it's pretty sharp. So what we're going to do here is we are going to screw this. Well, this just sits on top and then this uh, I think it's called a collet. goes over the top to hold it down here. Sorry, I'm doing this. Uh, trying to watch the monitor as I'm doing this so you get a pretty good look. But so this is the tool ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Now they say don't use any type of lubricant or anything. Just jam this through. So um, we're going to set up again out there and see how we do. Uh, I'll also show you when I remove the uh, old nail it's in there okay guys all right see you in a bit 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is crawl under here. I'm going in here for heat first because I want to use my right hand. Right hand and left shoulder is screwed up, so hopefully you'll be able to see this uh, extraction. We'll see how much air we get out. This is coming out easy. See? So now these needle nose pliers are a must-have, so I suggest you grab a couple. These are vice grips, and uh, they sell uh, other brands, but uh, I think the vice grip quality is pretty good. Look at how long this damn thing is. So it's it's really quite a big, wow, it's really big and there's a lot of pressure. So I am going to stick that back in there while I get my Dyna plug. So hopefully you saw that because that's that was really interesting. So I can't really tell exactly what this camera is looking at. Uh, I'm a little high on the tripod. Maybe I'll see if I can adjust this for a minute. So hang on a minute here. Let me uh, shut you off. Okay, so we're back with the Dyna plug now. I'm get on my creeper again here, crawl into position. This would be a lot easier if it was, you know, on the base of the tire or if it was on the uh, outside or, you know, any place else but on this inside. You can't use these things on the sidewall, so don't even think about that. But, uh, this particular position is, isn't the best to be in here. So now you can see me pretty good. Uh, I don't want to uh, wreck my camera while I'm doing this. Let's see. Now you have to go in at the exact angle that the, the wire went through the nail. So you can see I made a dot here. This is a correction pen. And uh, Bic sells them, you know, it has a little bowl point on the end. So have one of these with your kit. So with your Dyna plug, you need a white correction pen. You also need a good pair of uh, vice grip pliers. And uh, yeah, I always carry this 12-ton uh, bottle jack. This is just, you can pretty much stick your finger up there and, and jack up your truck. So um, these are worth having. All right, so let's see what we can do here now. Let's see what type of trouble we can get into. Let's see the angle here. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. And I'll keep it locked here so I can jam it back in there if I decide to. It doesn't really matter because I have an inflator. and I'm doing this at home, not on the side of the road. Okay, so... Take this out. You can see the angle now, so um, I have to be lined up like where that white dot is and, and in the hole, okay? There we go. Coming out. Okay, so now I'm trying to push it in. And it's very difficult to push in. All right, so I, I cannot push it in easily. It requires... I don't have the best angle here, but I'm probably doing about 15, 16 pounds, if not more. And... cannot get that thing to even go in a little bit. Okay? Now if I pull out... I think that Dyna plug... I think that plug wants to stay in there, which is going to screw the plug all up. So, I have to see if I can keep going. Now, I can't. So. And, 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 you know, you've got to have some type of a... Okay, so 
So this, this isn't working so good. Well, it's cocked on an off on an angle here. Got it firmly in there, but just can't, you know, really um, jam it through there. So my next thing is to, is to whack it with a soft mallet. So I'm going to try that. Now, unfortunately, to do that, I have to figure out some way to keep this up in the air. I knew that, you know, uh, inserting this plug was going to be the, the problem with the whole idea of this thing. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to jam anything through a tire, period, okay? That's just how it is. And uh, I know they show the, the little sweet looking chick jam a one through a motorcycle tire. But, well, number one, that's a motorcycle tire. And two... That's not a truck tire. <laughs> All right, let me stop this here, and uh, we'll be back with you in a second. Okay. Here we are back with the continuing. Dyna plug repair. Now I have to put you over on the side a little bit more here. Hopefully you can still see. I know you need that mud flap. But I need to get in better position here. Alright, so now I'm going to try to whack this damn thing with a little rubber mallet I have here. Yeah, that's working well. pretty sure I'm going to have to take this thing off the rim at this point because, you know, just really difficult to try to get the right angle, number one, number two, not really. Going in at all? You know, one thing, I keep falling off the creeper doing this. I'm going to hammer a little bullet into a tire. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Remember, I got to get it in all the way up to that black collar. Yeah, so this isn't working either, and I really didn't think it would. So my next step here is I'm going to actually try to put a, a bottle jack sideways on this thing and then hydraulically ram this thing into the tire because I think that's the only way to get it in. Okay. So... Now remember, this tire is almost completely out of air, too. So. Now you can see, you know, I'm, I am putting quite an amount of force on this to try to 
move it along with my uh, injured wrist here. It's in there a little bit. Maybe if it wasn't a rubber hammer, maybe a hard plastic one, maybe a little better. I hate this uh, hammer on this thing with a steel hammer because it's not gonna, it's not gonna hold up. It's not gonna hold up for sure. Yeah, it's just it's just hard to hold it in place and whack on it at the same time, and you know be on your be on your shoulder, be on a creeper, be under the truck. So this is very difficult um, example. So we're gonna try something different here. Okay, boys, now we are back. Now, I had a feeling that this dyna plug was going to be almost impossible to jam from the tire. So, before I started, I did go to Walmart and I picked up this little cheap, hyper tough $12 hydraulic jack. Because hydraulics are always best to use rather than to bust your elbows. You don't have to. However, you do have to bust your head to figure out how to use it properly. So what we have here is vehicle number two, which is just acting as a backstop for this 4x4. The 4x4 is connected to the, well it's not connected, it's just braced up against the base of the little, it's a two-ton jack I think. And then the two-ton jack is mating up to the Dyna plug. Now the... Uh, thing has to be kept at the exact angle. You know, I had to keep it at the exact angle of entry of the original nail. So that's why this, you know, really cockamamie setup here. I don't think anybody actually says cockamamie anymore. But that's why I had to have this setup to try to get, replicate the angle for the insertion. Now, we can see what happens when I pump the hydraulic jack. Now, hopefully if I'm on the right hole, it will plug it, and uh, if I do it wrong, I'll probably make a new hole. But one way or another, that uh, Dyna plug shaft is going into that tire today. And uh, I'll, I'll either be buying a new tire off this deal or thrilled with my Dyna plug fix. But. Um, <laughs> The 30-second uh, version of the fix, this is not. I think I've been at this about, um, all told, you know, tires, jack, everything else. So, I don't know, good hour. Good hour. Luckily, it's a nice day here. So, now there's just the excitement of hydraulically ramming this son of a bitch into its uh, hole. And hoping that it works. Well, I can see the tire indenting a little bit. Hopefully, you've got a view of this. Now, the entire is indenting a lot, but Dyna plug is moving. Oh, 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 it's coming out of angle like it's not the right angle. So, looks like we have to readjust the whole assembly here. Because it wants to uh, wants to stay off of it, kind of. Maybe I can get in here and help direct this dog and pony show here. Oh. Theater of the absurd. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's going off angle here and it's not going in, so let's uh, take the pressure off this. Let's see if we can readjust here. Now it looks to me like 
it's actually harder to put it through when there's less air in the tire. So I think I'm going to add some air before I continue here because what's happening is that the, uh, the rubber itself is caving in. So that may be part of my problem. Now I thought due to the contraction of the rubber it would be actually easier if there was less air in the tire, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, boys. Not a Dynaplug expert. Uh, shut this off. I'm going to have so many aches and pains and back aches and pains after this is over. I doubt if I'll be doing another Dynaplug repair. Okay, so I was finally able to uh, get this thing rammed in here. Uh, <clears throat> Fortunately, my camera fell on the ground while I was trying to do that, which was exactly what I was trying to avoid. Thank you. Thank you, Dynaplug. Anyways, I was able to jack this thing, jet welding this whole assembly here, and finally, with enough pressure, I was able to jam this thing through the tire, and eventually it came up to the shoulder of the tire. And of course, I had to kind of hold this whole thing in position at the right angle and um, so that's where we are right now so I can release the pressure on this now it's all pretty much off it anyways okay but you can see there was a lot of pressure required to get this son of a bitch to go through the sidewall here well not sidewall the shoulder shoulder no I'm not doing all right so as we can see it's all the way up to where it should be it's all the way up to the crown which is what they tell you to do all the way up to the end of this tool I can uh, take off my uh, 47 just remember when you travel you not only need a guide block but this four foot by four foot by four foot long piece of wood <laughs> two hydraulic jacks <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a, it's an interesting idea, you know. Maybe it'll actually work. It's really gonna suck, as if that when I'm done all, all this. And... Oh, I didn't tell you, I almost uh, hydraulically slammed my finger in between the pieces of wood, which that was fun. Just a big dent in my thumb now, so still works. <clears throat> so what are we doing next here? I don't know. Taking a taking a nap on a piece of wood might be good. Okay, so now we just simply remove the tool, and the thing will stay in there, right? So we just remove the tool now. I can hear a little air when I move the tool. Is it? I'm trying, I'm trying to take the tool out. This comes out with the plug on it. I'm going to like scream. Okay, so this isn't bad removing the tool. I'm just gently moving back and forth. Okay, so there it comes out. There is the vagina plug. <laughs> Sorry, that's your new name. Uh, and so now we're going to put some air in this tire and, and see what we got here. Now they say don't cut this end off because, uh, well, there's no way I'm putting a second one in here. It was that difficult to put one in. So uh, hopefully it'll self seal on that. So. Okay, it, I can see there's a lot of goo in, in that hole in there, so that is glad they give you the little swathy to clean it out, the pipe cleaner. Because you won't be able to get it in there unless that's cleaned out properly. Right. Use some type of degreaser to get in there first, orange cleaner, something like that. We can probably see it better over here at this angle. Just hold the camera. I think my camera fell on a piece of wood, so hopefully it's not damaged. It's so difficult when you're trying to do, you know, close-up photography on this stuff. But uh, luckily the lens wasn't out, so that's, that's a really good thing. 
So, all right, let me stop here and uh, clean things up a little bit here and we'll get some air in this tire and then we'll do a suds test. Are we having fun? Okay, so this is just another little summary of everything that we're using here. A spare car <laughs> to act as a backstop. A uh, spacer block for the base of the hydraulic jack. Here are Dynaplug Extreme. Extreme pain in the ass. Um, sorry guys. <laughs> if, it, if it seals the tire, I'll be like, hey, it's still good even though it uh, requires a hydraulic jack to put it through your tire. Um, now, maybe more difficult in the shoulder, I suspect it is. Don't jump down my throat too far. So, this is everything else we need. Hydraulic jack, wood blocks. Oh, a 12-ton jack there to get your truck up good. Um, all right. So... Let me get the compressor now. All right, boys, we're back again. So now we got the jack out from under the vehicle. We got 42 pounds air pressure in the tire. And uh, we're looking back at this thing. Now I've sprayed it down pretty darn good with my Zep spray bottle here, which has got a heavy concentration of Dawn and water in it. And if this uh, puncture, injury as they call it in the tire business, was doing anything, you'd be seeing lots of white foam happening. You know, kind of like it is right here, right this second. But that's, that's just because it's getting caught there. It's not because it's bubbling. But um, you, what you do is you wait several minutes if you're not, not familiar with this. And uh, you look to see if you see any type of uh, activity around the uh, repair. Now, um, there's a tremendous amount of inward pressure on this plug as well, which hopefully will help it vulcanize. That's one of the interesting things about doing, you know, the completely dry insert. You know, don't screw around with it by putting, you know, adhesive on it, thinking you're going to lubricate it or stuff. Hopefully the people at Dynaplug have, have figured out that, you know, this chemically bonds to the tire in some way that it makes a really good seal. So, um... It looks like it's a winner, boys. So, a uh, bit of a trouble getting it through, which I knew it was going to be, especially at this angle, especially on the on the shoulder right there. Uh, I wouldn't go much further before I'd say that's sidewall repair, you know. But I mean, right here, you still got the wrap around tread. I think you're okay, you know. It was a pretty darn big nail that was in this thing. Um, I will uh, measure that out and give you another look at that once I get out from under the vehicle. Um, got the vehicle down off its 12-ton uh, jack here. Just another little shot of everything you need for your Dynaplug repair. Second car. Creeper. Some type of shaft for the hydraulic. Little hydraulic jack. The big hydraulic jack. Bunch of wood. Air pressure gauge, Dynaplug, um, electric air compressor, and a little seat. And don't forget your little spray bottle for when you're all done. So that's the whole suite of ingredients needed to make the Dynaplug go. Okay, so here's a hoot. So this is this new northern. 12 ton jack and worked fine but now I cannot get this shaft to turn down and I've jacked it all the way up and I put a you know rubber collar on this thing all it just starts turning the pistons so this this piece of shit you know it just it's just jammed up it let me turn it all the way up here but now I can't turn it down at all so I'm stuck with a jack with a piston in the air like this screw up piston so I guess I'll give these clowns a call. They say, don't return product call. So I'm going to call. It's always something, guys. Always something. Okay, so I call the company because uh, there's a thing in the instructions that says, do not return this jack. 
So when I called it, it's a Torin Jack out of California. And uh, I let it ring for about two minutes and then no one ever picked up. Finally I got the answering machine. And they're like, Leo, message. So I left a message. So See, I can move it back and forth about a quarter, no, like a quarter of a turn. But I can't move it up or down but beyond that. It clicks. It just clicks. So uh, this is actually, even though it's a strong way, it's actually a Torin Jack. First time using it, right out of the box. So funny, here I am uh, raving about this jack and then uh, this bullshit happens with it, you know. Don't buy one, guys. Okay, guys, so we're doing another suds test. Final suds test before I cut off the little pigtail on the end here. And uh, I do not see anything. I do not see any, uh, any foaming going on here, so I'm just going to cut this off. And that will give it the, uh, the final, final thing we have to do to it. You know, cut it this way or this way. I guess I'll be on the angle here. I just give it a little cut and eh, it didn't really come off. Almost came off. So, a little trust, trusty scissors here. Yeah. Still waiting for my call back from the good folks at Tour and Jack. Yeah, they didn't they didn't call me. So I don't know. I don't know how I can ship it back with that damn rod up in the air. But I'm gonna be finding a box and shipping it back. The jacks are expensive, you know, like eighty bucks. So the first one I had leaked. I mean, I really like them because it's, you know, the dual stage, double throw, you know, get this shit in, does it doesn't perform for you, really, really pisses you off. I mean, the job is hard enough to trim this a little more, I think. The job is hard enough, especially today's job is hard enough. So, you really don't need a bunch of bullshit with your jack, too, right? Sorry to be bitching, boys. Yeah, so we got it trimmed off here. We'll let this camera just sit here for another 10 minutes, take another shot, see if we see anything. But uh, I think we're looking pretty good. Doing pretty good on the dyno plug. Okay, boys, in a bit. So we're giving this another test this time with the light on it. Maybe you can see it a little better. Because it's, uh, it's a dark subject matter, for sure. So you can look very carefully at one of these high-powered headlights for anything occurring. And when you try to put your solution on, you want to put it on like real easy. You don't want to really blast it because that makes a lot of foam to begin with. You have to wait for the foam to dissipate. So if you do this, you know, slowly, if it's going to, it's going to bubble up, you're going to, you're going to notice it a lot more. And if you just go and blast it, you see. There's plenty on there for that to start doing something, if, if it was going to do anything. So, now the question is, we drive it around, does it leak afterwards? Now I'll uh, keep you updated in the comment section. I don't add to it after this, but uh, I don't like to call a ball on this uh, completely as yet, but uh, from what I can see here, I don't see any any bubbling whatsoever. So that's a good sign. <sighs> be nice if something worked out today. Worked out easy. <laughs> Certainly wasn't putting it in, but uh, hey, didn't have to take it off the wheel, so didn't have to take it off the rim. So didn't have to take it off the truck, so Talk to you later, boys. Okay, boys, so this is a little post-tire repair follow-up. Um, this is what came out of my tire. It is uh, not the nail. It was in this way first. Uh, I believe this is like a heavy-duty uh, chain link fence wire strap or strap wire, whatever they use to 
put the uh, chain link fence around the uh, poles and that's what that appears to be and a good length about a sixteenth now yeah, one eighth inch diameter so that's a one eighth inch diameter which is just slightly smaller than the diameter of the dyna plug so it looks like uh, you know I sealed it up with one dyna plug now my dyna plug I cleaned out by putting some alcohol in one of these uh, pudding containers keep them after you have the pudding because uh, they're perfect for all sorts of stuff and then I cleaned this bore out really good with uh, the provided little uh, pipe cleaner probably need a new one because uh, the sticky stuff gets on the pipe cleaner and then not so good you can also use a q-tip if you take some of the fuzz off of it you can uh, ram that through make sure it's nice and clean and then you can reload another Dyna plug in before you put the tool away. Now I haven't tried this. Now let me put my glasses on here and uh, I'll attempt to give it a go here. So what we're going to do is uh, just load another one in. Now you can see they're a bit sticky. You can see they're actually a little smeared in the uh, container they come in here. Take this one out. And you can see it left a little adhesive there. Before I uh, put this in, I made sure that it was loose, and I suggest you do the same. It's uh, actually the diameter is actually a little too big to go in smoothly. Now, I've seen people say roll this in between your fingers, and uh, I don't know if that's such a good idea because you'll be getting your finger oils all over the rubber chemical, and that may later affect. How well it adheres. So I'd say put on a pair of uh, rubber gloves first. I'll do that. Just a little one one nitro glove is probably all you need. All right, so I have my nitro glove on now. Attempt to load this in. Make sure you put it in the right way. Here's the right way and a wrong way. I'll roll it back and forth a little bit and well you know what it starts to stick to the freaking rubber glove so oh there we go okay so now we can kind of sneak it in I'm turning it a little bit as I'm doing that okay so now she's loaded up oh I didn't really have that in camera for you sorry I rolled it a little bit and now uh, you know I'm uh, just rotating it in place. It still, still rotates easy. So there you go. So there's one loaded and ready to go and you, you can keep that right in, in the base here for uh, hopefully the next time you need it, which is, you know, hopefully never. <laughs> but um, so I hope it works out for me. Put this little cap back on it. I do have two, two other ones here. But uh, I don't like the idea of just throwing them in loose in the uh, in the tool. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Because I'll keep them in their container. The tool, I think, you know, pretty nice little tool. Pretty happy with it. It, it also held up under torque. I just wish they had given me a, a decent uh, neural on the end here, not this plastic. Because uh, plastic, especially modern plastics, just don't last. You know, they tend to... Uh, become brittle and crack with age. Not a fan of the plastics in general now, really. Uh, they're all second generation plastics and uh, they're all susceptible to troubles. So, it's been about two hours since I called Tor and Jack on that jack that won't come down. Stop! Call us! We'll fix everything! Here's the number, guys. They don't call you back. Thanks for watching! If you made it all the way through, congratulations! And I hope I didn't bore you too much. Uh, I hope uh, you learned a little bit, and uh, the people at uh, Dynaplug, uh, hey, if you uh, if you plug holes in a week, I'll be one happy camper, and I'll be sure to note it in the comments. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.